right, welcome back. Apparently, you probably didn't hear that first inning, but Albany leads 1-0. You may have seen it, but you didn't hear it. So a runner at first base, and that is for the Tigers. That's Estes. This will bring up the fifth batter of the afternoon for Anson. He'll square the bunt here, and well, that goes over his head. And so Albany leads 1-0. Kaysen Fairchild led off the game with a single up the middle. He stole a base, reached third base on a throw in there, and then they filled an error by Anson at first base on a ball that was hit by Zane Wagner, allowed Kaysen to score. Well, I think he can uh, he can square. So it's a kind of a goofy rule. You can square the bunt if you don't offer at it. I don't think he offered at it. It was it was basically thrown at his head. He was he was ducking for cover. As Tyler Chapman's fastball was thrown in behind him, but the count will stay at one and zero. So one ball, no strikes here. I'm sure that Tyler's fastball would make a lot of people duck. <laughs> I'm thinking so. He's going to square here. That pitch is going to miss outside. And got Coach Peacock up here with me, and I want to welcome him. That first inning, Coach, you, you kind of seen it. You know, the strike zone is it, it's pretty tight, and, and he's given that outside corner, but his breaking ball pitches um, that Wilburn was throwing was, was missing up in the zone here, and Tyler's command has showed some issues here as they had a leadoff walk, and now this batter here at three balls and no strikes. Yeah, you could tell our guys are going to have to make that adjustment on that outside corner. I think both two guys went down looking at that outside corner while ago in the first inning. Yeah, Cole Reed and Callan Fairchild, both of them on pitches they didn't swing at. Tyler's going to fire that fastball in there for strike number one. So three balls and one strike here. And coach Nichols, the coach for the Anson Tigers in, in the third base coaching box. Here's Tyler Chapman's pitch. And that's going to miss up in the zones. So Two walks to start the inning here, and this will be a mound visit from Coach Fairchild here early on in the top of the second inning. Albany leading 1-0. Kind of talked about it in that first inning, Coach Peacock, but last week, Cisco upsetted um, Stanford. Stanford, yeah. and that kind of threw everybody back on even ground as Albany, by them losing to Holly and Stanford in that first half, it kind of threw us behind the behind the ball there for a little bit, but that upset victory kind of got us back into the ball game here, and this second half is going to be a big big uh, part of the season to kind of hammer out those standings and, you know, start looking ahead in the playoffs and you want to be first place, second place, third place. I mean, all that's kind of thrown up in the air, but that does change when you would eventually see new home down the road. Yeah, that's it. I think everybody kind of looks at them and pencils them in sees where they're going to match up with them. But obviously, they're one of the better teams in Region 1. So, you know, depending on how you finish, it, you, you kind of look ahead and see where you're going to line up with them at some point down the road. And New Home returning both of their ace pitchers from last year. So that's that's the reason they're state ranked and had some success. One of their pitchers is committed to Texas Tech. Your left fielder, Woods Peterson, shaded towards the left field line here. I don't know. Well, he's, maybe he's in the right spot. Here's T-Chap's pitch. That's going to miss outside. So one ball and one strike here. Chip Chambers still playing more towards right field. And there's a big gap in that left field, between left field and center field. But as hard as Tyler throws, likely not going to be anything pulled in that direction. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be bunted right towards Tyler Chapman. He'll glove it underhand over to first base. It goes over his head. That's going to score a run. It may score two here as Coach Nichols is going to hold up the runner at third base. Anson will tie it up at 1-1, but they have runners now at second and third. And on a routine play, Tyler just flipped it over Callen's glove. And it's just one of those one of those plays that should have been an out. But you got to get tip your hat to the Anson Tiger batter that's able to put that bunt into play. Yeah, and he was getting down – the line pretty quick right there. So this will bring up Tackleman, the starting shortstop, Hunter Tackleman batting in the seven hole here. So got a 1-1 game here. 
Here's Chapman's pitch, and that's going to be fouled back. Fastball that was telling in on the hands of Tackleman, and he able to fight it off there. So count no balls and two strikes here. Tigers at second and third base here in the top of the second inning. Here's Chapman's pitch, and it's going to be a called strike right over the heart of the home plate for a strikeout, the third one of the afternoon for Tyler. Really good job right there of Tyler battling back after that error right there at first base, coming back, get a quick out, try to get through this inning, fight through this inning with nobody else getting across the plate. It's going to be a big challenge for Tyler here. He's got some pressure pitches coming up here, and the senior has kind of found his groove throwing her to Anthony Hernandez here, the third baseman, and has strike number one. So no balls and one strike here. Tyler throws another fastball. Swing and a miss by Hernandez and the count now 0 and 2. Mason McCloy plays pretty shallow in, in center field, or in right field, sorry, in right field. Shaded more towards the right field line. Here's the pitch. Now it's gonna hit him. Hits Hernandez in the chest. Not what you wanted to see with the count 0 and 2. That'll load him up for Anson. Start looking at the other teams in this district, and I mean, I've kind of, I haven't watched a whole lot of baseball this year, but what I've seen and what I've kind of looked at, uh, the, the teams are pretty pretty even. I mean, any 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 given night, um, Anson, Cisco, all these teams can can defeat you, and uh, you know, kind of shows the the balance of this this district. Well, it's a very tough district. That's what, you know we're talking about the playoffs, and and I think a, no wouldn't be surprising to anybody if the two and three seeds meet up in the third round. I think it did last year. Last I'm not year. so sure yeah. the one and four seeds didn't meet up last year in the, in the third round of the playoffs. So very de very deep district right here. Well, Coach Fairchild will bring the infield in, and so the infield's on the infield grass. Bases are loaded here for the Tigers. One out here in the top of the second inning in a game that's one to one. Tyler Chapman, 1-0 pitch is going to be a strike. So the count now 1-1. One one. This is Shoemaker, I believe. Here's Tyler's pitch. Now it's going to be a called strike. That umpire has been giving that pitch all afternoon. And if you stay out there, it's going to be hard to hit the ball. Here's the 1-2 pitch. That's going to be hit off the handle of the bat, kind of a self-defense kind of swing. That ball was moving in on the hands of Shoemaker and fouled that one off towards first base. Here's a one-two pitch by Chapman. That's going to miss outside. The count now two balls and two strikes here. Nothing wrong with that location right there, trying to get that edge. Yeah, he stays out there and so good things will happen if Tyler's able to paint that outside corner. What was that? I guess the batter called timeout. The shoemaker called timeout as Tyler Chapman was fixing to deliver the pitch. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and that's going to miss outside. It's going to be bases loaded, or bases are loaded now, and it's a full count. Just one out here, so the Tigers won't be off with this pitch. Just trust yourself right here, Tyler. Come back and get this guy right here. Big pitch. So Chapman comes set at the belt. Big long pause. Here's the delivery. Swing and a miss. That's going to be a strikeout as Tyler Chapman puts one about letter high. And Shoemaker may have swung at ball four. I think he might have. That ball is getting in on him pretty fast right there. Tyler did a good job. That's another big out right here. That will allow Coach Fairchild to move the defense back in their normal position here. And with two outs and a 1-1 game with the bases loaded. Here's the pitch, and that's going to miss up in the zone for ball number one. Let's see who this is here in the – this is Dillard, their leadoff hitter, center fielder. But he struck out in his first plate appearance. One ball, no strikes, and that pitch is going to miss for ball number two. So two balls now. A 1-1 game here. We're in the top of the second inning. Pitch is going to miss inside. Count now 
three balls and no strikes. And this inning started off with two walks. Hanson had a couple of walks and then a fielding error or throwing error by Tyler Chapman kind of ignited the one run and kind of got Albany in, in hot water here. But Tyler trying to pitch his way out of it, able to get two outs here. And bases are loaded with three balls and no strikes. Yeah, let's, I'd like to see Tyler battle back right here. Let's, let's get back into this pitch right here and make this guy swing the bat. Yeah, Cole Reed went out for the mound visit and had a few words with his senior classmate, Tyler Chapman. Here's T. Chap's pitch, and that's going to miss outside. So that'll be a four-pitch walk of Dillard, and that'll bring a Tiger across home plate, and Anson will take a 2-1 lead here. This will bring up Reister, the second baseman. So Branson Reister, the second baseman here. Tyler Wilburn, really the only one that's had a good swing on Tyler's pitches. He sits on deck, so we don't want to see Tyler here in this inning. We'd like to see him coming up with nobody on the lead off the next inning. Reister swings at that first pitch and fouls it back towards the screen here behind home plate. Tyler, here's the pitch. That's a nice breaking check ball. Check that one. Yep. Ah, oh, Albany fans, they didn't see it the same way we did, or the, the umpire didn't see it the, way, the same way we did. The count now, one ball and one strike. Here's the pitch. Now it's going to be a hit towards center field. Chip Chambers will take three steps in and glove it. Good. So Chip Chambers comes away with the catch in center field and Anson will leave them stranded. So we'll be on to the bottom of the second inning. It's Anson 2, Albany 1. We'll be right back. Where a handshake is our word, cattle are money, and timing is everything. Western Livestock is a family-owned and operated livestock auction and order buying company with more than 30 years of experience. You trust us with your livelihood each week. The buying power in our seats ensures top dollar for your livestock to allow you to keep doing what you love. With sale barns in Oklahoma City, Comanche, and Woodward, Oklahoma, and Knoxville, Iowa, we're large enough to serve you, but small enough to know you. To learn more, call Ben Ham at 940-631-2333 or visit westerncommissioncompany.com. We're the bank you've always known and trusted, a part of your community for generations. And now, First National Bank of Albany Breckenridge is Clear Fork Bank. We're still privately owned and independent. You'll find the same dedicated team, the same friendly faces, and the same strong relationships with our customers. Our offerings have expanded to better serve you, but our commitment to local banking is steadfast. Clear Fork Bank, serving Texans since 1883. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, hunting and fishing supplies, along with wildlife and pet feed. Let us load you up in our drive through warehouse. Need something delivered? We can come to you with our blower buggy to fill your corn and protein feeders, along with delivery of sack feed and rounder square bales of hay. Not only does Easy Feed have all your farming and ranching supplies, it's now the proud home of Parsons Beef, where you can get your prime Wagyu and Angus beef straight from our Texas ranches. Easy Feed and Supply, proudly serving Albany since 2011. Welcome back here. Chip Chambers up to bat for Albany. Anson leads 2-1, and here's the pitch by Wilburn, and Chambers will make a big cut at it and swing and a miss. Strike number one here. Chambers wears number 12. He's caught two fly balls out there in center field, both of them to end the first inning, to end the, and to end the second inning also. And that second inning, Anson had him loaded up. Chip's going to hit this one towards left field. It's going to hang up in the air, and the left fielder will – Take about four or five steps towards the foul line, and he'll catch it. Good piece of hitting there by Chip. That ball just kind of hung up there. It's, it's into a pretty stiff wind. It is a very stiff wind. It's blowing right in from center field. So it's kind of hoping that ball might have caught a little bit more wind and drifted to the foul line, or the foul line dropped in. But it just, like you said, just hung up in the air for the left fielder. 
count or that'll bring up Brody Oliver here, the second baseman. Brody has been doing most of the catching on the season, and this afternoon he'll gets to start at second base. But as Coach Peacock was saying during the break, he was talking about Tyler's pitch count up in the 40s already, and um, Cole Reed, one of the likely relief pitchers playing catcher. So we'll see if Coach Fairchild kind of moves around the infield here in this next inning. Count now, no balls and two strikes here as Brody fouls off a couple of pitches. Wilburn throws from the wind up here with nobody on. Here's his 0-2 pitch. Pitch is gonna miss high. So one ball, one ball and two strikes. We want to wish Coach Tate Thompson and the golf team the best of luck as they'll be headed off to the old Brickyard on Sunday afternoon to play their practice round and compete in the regional golf meet on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, I'm talking to Coach Thompson this week. I know they are excited about being back there. Uh, it's almost like a home course for these guys. Yeah, they've got to play there. for This will be the fourth year for most of those seniors that have been on the golf team. And Brody's going to go down looking, pitch kind of back in on the inside part of the plate. So that'll be out number two. So Chambers flew out the left field, and Brody goes down with the strikeout. And that's the third strikeout for Wilburn on the afternoon, and that'll bring up Woods Peterson. Pretty good sports week this week. Had the Masters going on. I've, I've got a little Masters app. I don't know how productive I've been at work this week. I'm kind of telling on myself, but I've been watching watching the Masters throughout the week. And Yeah, I sat at my desk today and was working on our little track uh, video and had the Masters on my other computer. Oh, Woods Peterson's going to hit this one up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. Peterson will get the first base. So that's the second base hit of the afternoon as Peterson able to hit it into center field. And that's a carbon copy hit that Kaysen Fairchild led the game off with. Yeah, that's good at bat right there by Woods. Fought that off, got it out, got on base, and see if we can't scratch something out in this inning right here. So with two outs, see if we can get a little rally going here. As Woods Peterson at first base. Anson leads 2-1, and this will bring up the right fielder, Mason McCloy. Wilburn will throw over, and Peterson will dive back into the first base bag. Wilburn, the senior starting pitcher for Anson here, and he'll throw back over Peterson back into the bag again. It's not like the MLB where there's a count on how many times you can throw over. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a strike. I know last year Cole Chapman would throw over three or four times, and about the time that they think, well, there's no way he's going to throw over again, he'd wing it over there and pick off that base runner. He did a good job of setting those guys up. He did. He was very effective. Here's the pitch, and that's going to miss high for ball number one. So one ball and one strike here. Two outs, and Anson leads 2-1, and Kaysen Fairchild on deck. Mason, where's number zero? Wilburn's pitch. Woods Peterson off to second base, and he oh, yeah. slides in safely. That throw from the catcher was kind of tilling towards the second baseman, but a nice – Slide there by Woods Peterson as he kind of attacked the, I guess I'd call it the inside part of the second base bag and allowed him to get in there safely and got a runner now in scoring position. Need Mason to put this one on the ground and put some pressure on these guys. There's a big gap between the first baseman and second baseman as the second baseman's trying to hold Woods Peterson over at second base. So anything to hit to the right side might be up. And Peter, uh, Mason's going to swing through a fastball. That's going to be a strikeout of Mason, so we'll leave one stranded. That'll be Woods Peterson at second base. We're on to the top of the third inning. Anson still leads 2-1. to one. We'll be right back. Serving the big country, Resource Care Community Health Center strives to be the leading health care resource in each community we serve. Our mission is to provide exceptional health care 
and outreach services to the communities we serve in the Big Country area through medical, dental, and behavioral health access for all. With locations at Albany, Clyde, Breckenridge, Merkel, Cross Plains, and our newest location opening in the spring of 2024 in Baird, we are committed to providing exceptional services to the Big Country. We accept almost all private insurances, as well as Medicaid, Medicare, and a sliding fee scale discount. Located at 525 North Main Street in Albany, Texas, the shop opened its doors in September 2023. We carry a large variety of items from handmade bits and spurs, and buckles, leather goods, saddles and tack, ropes, and assortment of knives. We also provide an assortment of home goods through G3 Cattle Company. We are stocked with fresh cuts of beef, pork, and chicken, along with jams and preserves, baking goods, Bowman's milk, coffee, and other general merchandise. If you're in need of a trim, we also offer a walk-in barber service. We're open from 1 to 5.30 Tuesday to Thursday and 9 to 5.30 on Fridays. Come visit us at the shop, Albany's headquarters for homemade goods. Right, we're top of the third inning here, and Anson still leads two to one. But Tyler Chapman back onto the mound here for your Albany Lions, and bring up Tyler Wilburn, leadoff hitter here in this top of the third inning. Wilburn bats in the three three spot for Coach Nichols. Here's Tyler's pitch, and that's going to be grounded towards the second baseman, Brody Oliver, on to first base. Tyler oh, home safe. That's a nice play by uh, Brody Oliver as he went towards the second base bag and kind of showed off his arm strength and he winged it over to first base. And Did they think he was his foot off the bag, you think, Tony? Or was I, it a, just I think know. he beat I think, it? I think it was a bang bang play. And of course, half of the fans are excited about this call and the half that we're rooting for, not real happy. Coach Fairchild out to visit complain I don't know what <laughs> what you call it but he's he's uh, trying to get an explanation I think he's asking if he'll ask the home plate umpire for help here definitely a close play yeah it's, uh, right it was, there it's, it, but Wilburn has some speed so it wasn't a ball that was hit extremely hard so it allowed Wilburn to get down the line pretty quickly and I thought when Brody fielded it he probably didn't have a chance to throw him out but then his arm strength showed that it was a bang bang play and whatever was discussed, Coach Fairchild is okay with it and he's strolling towards the first base dugout. Now he's gonna call time and come visit with the home plate umpire. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back here. All, after all the discussion, Wilburn will stay at first base here. So Wilburn with a infield single. We'll give him an infield single there. So no fielding there, no throwing there. Tyler will throw over to first base and Wilburn back into the bag safely. Anson leads 2-1 here. So Wilburn at first base, and this will bring up Estes, Cole Estes, the first baseman. He took a timeout to tie his shoe. And now back into the batter's box here, the first baseman crowds the home plate. They're in that right-handed batter's box. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. 
good pitch right there, Tyler. And he just needs to settle in right here and start coming after these batters and showing off that arm strength. I'll tell you what, he, you got to give S's credit. He's right, he got those toes right on the line here. And got the coach, I've got this coach against, with, and watch Tyler Chapman since he's about eight. And it's a little too close for comfort. See if Albany can turn t a double play here. As this squares the bunt, and that's a strike. I don't think, did he foul it off? I'm not really sure. I'm not I think sure. Were, I thought he kind of caught in between there. Yeah, I think he tried to bunt it, and I don't know if he actually made contact or not. I mean, he did offer at it. That was a strike. But his offer was more or less in the situation where the ball was thrown kind of towards him, and he, Coach Nichols, I think they're thinking maybe it went off the top of Cole's catcher's mitt. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was going pretty smooth and a couple of calls that could go either way, and I don't think anybody's happy now. So Wilbur, Wilburn back at first base here. The count now, oh, no balls and two strikes here, and Estes back in the batter's box here. He'll choke up on the bat here. Case and Fairchild and Brody Oliver, your second baseman and shortstop, squeezing towards that second base bag. Here's the pitch. That misses outside. Kind of looking up here, Tony, at, you know, the scoreboard showing one and two. Game changer showing two and one. So not real sure if he <laughs> called that a strike or not whenever he uh, went for that bunt attempt. I sure hope he called it a strike. Here's Tyler's pitch. Big long pause. That's going to be hit towards Brody. Brody will glove it. He'll wing over to second base. Nice Got play there. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, that may have been Mr. Makeup. But anyway, that's going to be a double play. Great job there by Brody Oliver. Brody not getting the, you know, not playing second base a whole lot this year, kind of making a couple of nifty plays there as he fielded that and he got it over to Kaysen and Kaysen got it out of his glove quickly over to Callen and that's a little double play action here. Now on a ball that really, it was hit to Brody's left. So it's kind of a situation where, you know, I didn't know that he was gonna be able to pull that off, but great job there by the Albany defense. Two outs erases the infield single of Wilburn. That's going to be a called strike. Big play right there, getting those two outs. Now Tyler can come after this batter, try to get out of this inning without throwing too many pitches. Yeah, great job there by the, the defense here. And Tyler's pitch is going to miss. So one ball and one strike here. One ball, one strike. Third baseman Zane Wagner, he plays about three steps beyond the third base bag. So he's playing a little deeper here with Samuel up. Here's the pitch. And that's gonna be hit foul. Right at the plate. And count one ball and two strikes here. Another big pitch right here for Tyler coming in with 41 pitches and start this inning and right at 50 right now. So. Get out of this inning and with only 10 pitches would be a big comeback after that long second inning. Senior comes set at the belt. Here's the pitch. That curveball is going to be a swing and a miss. That'll be a strikeout. And that'll end the inning. So nobody on. Albany able to get a double play that inning. Anson will keep the lead at 2-1, to one, but we're on to the bottom of the third inning. We'll be right back. Where a handshake is our word. Cattle are money, and timing is everything. Western Livestock is a family-owned and operated livestock auction and order buying company with more than 30 years of experience. You trust us with your livelihood each week. The buying power in our seats ensures top dollar for your livestock to allow you to keep doing what you love. With sell barns in Oklahoma City, Comanche, and Woodward, Oklahoma, and Knoxville, Iowa, we're large enough to serve you, but small enough to know you. To learn more, call Ben Hale at 940-631-2333 or visit westerncommissioncompany.com. We're the bank you've always known and trusted, a part of your community for generations. And now, First National Bank of Albany Breckenridge is Clear Fork Bank. We're still privately owned and independent. You'll find the same dedicated team, the same friendly faces, and the same strong relationships with our customers. Our offerings have expanded to better serve you, 
but our commitment to local banking is steadfast. Clear Fork Bank, serving Texans since 1883. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, Uh, welcome back here as Kaysen Fairchild will lead off this inning. The senior shortstop is one for one on the afternoon with a single up the mid middle, and he's the only Albany base runner to come around to score. And Anson leads two to one here as Wilburn's been pitching a nice game for the Anson Tigers. That ball's going to be hit fouls. The count now 0 oh and 2, so no balls and two strikes here to Kaysen. Kaysen and Woods Peterson, the only two base hits here so far for Albany. Here's Wilburn's pitch. That's going to miss outside. Count one ball and two strikes. Wilburn's really going after that outside corner. Got it early on and trying to see if he can expand it a little bit. Some late movement on that last pitch. That missed outside. That ball's going to be hit down the line. Base hit. Kaysen headed for first base and he'll round looking for second. And Kaysen Fairchild will slide in safely. That ball gets away from the second baseman, but the first baseman backs it up. That's a leadoff double by Kaysen Fairchild. Two for two on the afternoon. And yeah, great two. job right there by Kaysen. Down 0-2 in the count. Pulls one down the third baseline right there. Great job by Kaysen getting on, leading off this inning. And Kaysen, two for two on the afternoon. I know the last game we did, Kaysen didn't have a great game at the plate and after the game he was pretty frustrated but getting off to a good start here two for two on the afternoon this will bring up Tyler Chapman Chapman 0 for 1 he popped up the shortstop in his first plate appearance and that pitch is going to miss inside and high for ball number one Anson able to score two there in the top of the Second inning, Albany scored one in the bottom of the first. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. Count now one and one. So one ball, one strike. Here to Tyler Chapman. Tyler trying to help himself out. He's a starting pitcher this afternoon for Albany. Anson leading two to one, casing at second base. And that ball's gonna be fouled back towards the screen count will be one ball and two strikes. Flag in center field blowing in towards the infield. Here's the pitch and Tyler will spool a pitch and foul it back behind the stands here. And it's like a roll right over the top of that bus. So one ball and two strikes here. Shortstop Dillard playing pretty deep at shortstop. So about the same spot he caught the pop up. Will burn a wheel around and make Kaysen run back towards the second base bag. You gotta imagine what the speed Kaysen has. That's gonna put a little pressure on them to make sure and try to hold him close. Another pitch that Tyler's going to foul back. Nice piece of hitting by Tyler just to live for another pitch. And an off-speed pitch that probably was a ball, but at this situation you can't really look look at it. And T-Chap will live for another pitch here. Wilburn comes set. That's going to be hit foul. And more importantly, he's working up Wilburn's pitch count a little bit here. Next week, got a busy week. So I was telling Coach Peacock, well, I'll start off my week in Ferris on Monday and Tuesday. And so we got softball playing on Monday. Is that correct? That's correct. Moved it to Monday. Be senior night for those ladies. Yeah, we got the 
do our first softball broadcast of the year out there this uh, last week, I believe, against Baird. And pretty exciting game for the Lady Lions that come away with the victory over, over Baird. It's good to see them back on the field, getting to play a little bit here, finish off the district before heading to the playoffs. That's going to be hit into the – Goodbye. Yeah, it's going to get by the right fielder. Nice piece of hitting by Tyler Chapman. That will score Case and Fairchild. That will even it up at two. And I tell you what, that is some good hitting by Tyler Chapman. He fouled off some tough pitches and on, on a one-two pitch. Instead of trying to pull it, he just poked it towards right field and it got by the second baseman, by the right fielder, and – that's an RBI double. Again, you had the second baseman trying to hold Kaysen on there at second, so it opened up a little bit more space right there, and Tyler not trying to do too much with that pitch. Again, fought it off, fought it off, and then found him a hole, and a big RBI double right there for Tyler. Well, Chapman will stand at second base, and that will bring up Cole Reed, your starting catcher. Reed 0 for 1 on the afternoon with a strikeout. So with the runner at second base here, and. Cole Reeds has, has an opportunity for RB, RBI that will give us a lead here. As game's at 2-2. Two two. He'll hit this one up the middle. That'll be a base hit. Tyler Chapman That's around nice. third. He's going to try to come home. The throw is going to be cut off by the second baseman. So an RBI single by Cole Reed and scored now 3-2 to two, Albany. Another great piece of hitting right there. And uh, found him a hole. You know, none of these base hits have been hit hard. You look at Woods. Well, I guess Kaysen's down the line is probably the hard, hardest hit baseball. But everything's been hit with Woods and Kaysen's up the middle. You had Tyler's ball that was hit in the gap between the first baseman and second baseman. And really, Kaysen was the only one. But let's hold that thought here as the big righty Zane Wagner steps into the batter's box. Pitch is going to miss low. You know, you see that a lot of times. Teams are just smoking it, and it'll just go right to the third baseman, right to the shortstop, oh, yeah. and you just get frustrated, and the team comes up and just starts blowing little gaps. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's all you got to do. It's it's a, it's, a, it's a game of inches, and like you said, it's, it's tough. Here's the pitch, and that's going to be chopped towards the shortstop. He'll backhand it. Nice play by the shortstop. He won't be able to get nobody out. But that was nifty play by Dillard there. That was a good pick. I thought that ball was going to short hop him right there for a second. He, he did a good job of staying with that ball. So he'll hold Cole Reed at second base here. That ball gets by him. More than likely, Cole Reed gets the third, and there's probably runners at first and third. And after one pitch, it would have been runners at second and third. But now with that nice play there by the shortstop, runners will stay at first and second here, and it will bring up Callan Fairchild. Kind of start seeing Albany putting more balls in play here as that lineup's coming through for the second time. Well, and they're being really aggressive early in the count. You know, Cole, first pitch single. I think Zane was maybe the second pitch count again, just now fouled off the first pitch. So, yeah, they're trying to jump on Tyler's fastball and keep him from throwing that curveball that Wilburn has shown some success throwing. And I guess the only thing that Wilburn's having trouble is getting that curveball down in the zone and for a strike. Here's the 1-1 pitch. And that's going to be lined into left field. That's going to be a base hit. That should score Cole Reed. Oh, he did. He, well, he's across home plate. Nichols will come out for a visit. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Albany now leads 4-2. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, hunting and fishing supplies, along with wildlife and pet feed. Let us load you up in our drive through warehouse. Need something delivered? We can come to you with our blower buggy to fill your corn and protein feeders, along with delivery of sack feed and round or square bales of hay. Not only does Easy Feed have all your farming and ranching supplies, it's now the proud home of Parsons Beef, where you can get your prime Wagyu and Angus beef straight from our Texas ranches. Easy Feed and Supply, proudly serving Albany since 2011. Whether it's sculptures, metal fences, metal art, or entry gates, Joe Barrington has you covered. 
His images are drawn from a lifetime of living in rural Texas. With projects located in areas such as the Rawls College of Business Administration at Texas Tech, the Rio Grande Zoo in Albuquerque, New Mexico, along with his works being included in private collections, including the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and the Old Jail Art Center in Albany, Texas. Contact Joe today at 940-862-3023. Check him out on the internet at joebarrington.art or swing by and check out some of his art collections found at the Magnolia Station in Albany, Texas. Let's take a look at the area track meet for Districts 9 and 10 held on April 11th at Newton Field in Graham, Texas. Qualifying in the field events were girls discus throwers Keanu Robertson and Cheyenne Weaver, girls shot put Keanu Robertson, boys shot put Adam Hill, and boys pole vaulters Luke Marshall and Braylon Billington. On the track we had Adam Hill and the boys 110 meter hurdles, Braylon Billington, Jackson Street, Chip Chambers, and Callum Fairchild in the boys 4x2, Ashlyn Miller and Zane Lefevre in the girls 400, Jace Tinkle in the boys 400, Adam Hill in the boys 300 meter hurdles, and Jace Tinkle, Jackson Street, Chip Chambers, and Adam Hill in the boys 4x4. The area meet was kicked off with the field events. First off, it was Keanu Robertson qualifying in both the discus and the shot put for the lady lines. And then for the Albany light lines, we had Adam Hill qualifying the shot put, and then Luke Marshall and Braylon Billington both qualifying in the pole vault. Girls all performed well. Um, we had Kiana get out in both of her uh, shot put and discus. Um, she um, Cheyenne threw, threw well. Um, she was about seven feet short of advance and she got fifth. A uh, couple of PRs in the vault. Adam threw well in the shot put. Both the boys pole vault and shot put will start at 9 a.m. on Friday next week, along with the women's shot put, which is scheduled to start at 11.30. The women's discus will be on Saturday morning, starting at 9 a.m. Now let's take a look at the run. All right, welcome back here. Albany leads 4-2. to two. We're in the bottom of the third inning. There's no outs. Albany able to score three runs here in the bottom of the second inning. That'll bring up Chip Chambers, and Chip Chambers 0 for 1 in the afternoon as he flew out to the left fielder in his first plate appearance. Here's the pitch, and Chambers will look to bunt, but he'll pull it back quickly and count one ball and no strikes here. Looks like we got Estes right here on the mound, number 10. I think he was either the first baseman. Yes, he was the first baseman. He'll go to pitching here, and Wilburn will go over to first base. Chip's going to try to bunt this one. It's going to roll towards the third base dugout, and count now will be one ball and one strike here. So Wilburn over to first base. He'll exit with giving up four runs. Estes, the big righty, will come set. Here's the pitch. And that misses inside. So two balls and one strike here to Chip. I did get to see a video of the mile relay yesterday and First Chip Chambers, one of those runners on the mile relay, and they got second, correct? They did. Uh, again, dropped more time this week, went from 3.30 to 3.28, and every one of those guys just continued to drop their time as, again, like we said earlier, preparing for that original meet next week, and so uh, good to see these guys, and they're starting to get in shape and drop the, those quarter times. The count now two and two here to Chip. Here's the pitch, and that's going to miss outside. So the count will be full. So three balls and two strikes here to Chip with no outs. You got Callan Fairchild at first base and Zane Wagner at second. Albany leads 4 2. Estes comes set. He'll take a quick look at second base, and Chip's going to swing through a pitch that's on the outside part of the plate. So Chambers will be the first out of the third inning here. This will bring up Brody Oliver. Brody Oliver. Oliver able to turn a double play in the last inning. Help erase a leadoff infield single by Wilburn. Here's the pitch. That's going to miss outside. It's Coach Fairchild going through the signs over at third base. Oliver back into the batter's box here. 
That pitch is going to be a called strike and caught the inside corner. So one ball and one strike here to Brody. Hernandez, the third baseman, plays even with third base bag. So two balls and one strike here to Brody. Love to see him get a hold of one. We got speed on the bases right there. Zane moves really well, and Callen, another guy that's got great speed. So. Uh, gonna miss maybe high. Yep. Well, this umpire, he will not give you the strike, the strike up in the zone. He wants it down. Three balls and one strike here. Here's Estes pitch. And that's going to hit Brody in the back. Oliver will take it right in the three on the back of the jersey, and he'll get on to the first base. I don't know that he could have got out of the way of that pitch. I think he's uh, it was coming in on him, wasn't it? There was no dodging it. Yeah. Just going to have to wear it and move on. I, I feel like I've, I was athletic enough. To, I would have got out of the way. Of course, oh, Brody, he's a tough kid. He's one of those kids that you know, Clayton may have <laughs> told him, hey, you get a pitch inside. It's a free base. But Brody at first base here. Bases will be loaded here with Woods Peterson, and Woods Peterson one for one on the afternoon. What's this? Talking about Woods, this is a kid that's worked extremely hard this year. I don't know that at the beginning of the school year that you would think Woods would be your one of your starting baseball players, and he's turned some football success into some a good baseball season. You know, Woods had a really good spring last year, and we, we kind of talked about him, and we saw how, how hard he worked in the weight room. We kind of thought he had worked really hard to get himself in this position. See, he's put on some muscle for sure and Woods count here is two balls and one strike here. So two balls and one strike here. Bases loaded. Albany leads four to two. Got Wagner at third, Fairchild at second. And Oliver at first base and Peterson will foul that one back. We count now two and two. So two balls and two strikes here. Anson Tigers had their first baseman and third baseman in on the infield grass. And that nearly hits Peterson. That would have been an RBI. So three balls and two strikes here to Peterson. Bases are loaded here, and there's only one out. Estes out of the stretch here. The radial. Oh, nearly. That was nearly perfect. Perfectly paced, placed hit, but it tailed foul just beyond the first base bag, and everybody will have to retrieve back to their base. Another one of those balls that just comes off the bat just perfectly to find a little gap, find a little hole. And that would have likely scored a couple of runs. Here's a 3-2 pitch. That's going to miss low, so Peterson will get a walk, and that'll push another run across home plate. So a game that seemed at the start of this inning was a 2-1 to one Anson lead has now turned into a 5-2 to two Albany lead. And Albany has a chance to do some more damage here with the bases loaded and just one out. You know, we came out aggressive at the start of this inning, attacking Wilburn. We've kind of seen him the first time through. Second time through, we come out and start attacking, put the bat on the ball. And now with the new pitcher again, we're getting patient again, trying to see this guy, fill him out a little bit. And guys are doing a good job of drawing some free bases. Yeah, that'll bring up Mason McCloy here. And McC McCloy had a quick visit with Coach Fairchild. So let's see if they got something gone here. That's going to be a strike. Estes able to paint that outside corner. And Count no balls and one strike here. And that's going to be strike number two. So I think the visit was let's take a pitch until there's a strike. Once you get a strike, they'll try to bunt it. But now Mason down 0-2, and he'll have to swing away here. 
Here's Estes pitch, and that's going to be a called strike. He's been calling that a strike all afternoon. And Mason will go down looking. So that'll be two outs now, and that'll bring up Kaysen Fairchild. And Kaysen, two for two on the afternoon. And I believe he started this inning. He Is that did correct? start this inning. He was the first batter in this inning. Started us off. So kaysen has got him loaded here. That's going to be a strike. Kaysen got that double, and he was down in the count 0-2 and, and able to hit one down the liner there. Here's the pitch. That's going to miss outside. Probably more high than outside. So the count now 1-1. One and one. So one ball, one strike here to score 5-2 Albany. That's this pitch. And that's going to be a called strike. A little check swing there by Kaysen, but that caught the outside corner. And that's that location. We've yeah. seen it multiple times now. Yeah, if you could stay in that spot, you'd have a lot of success. That ball's going to be sky foul towards the third base dugout. And it'll land behind it. So Kaysen will live for another pitch here. So count will be one ball and two strikes here to the senior shortstop. Nice to see Albany come away with four runs so far in this inning, but an opportunity to add a few more. Yeah, big hit right here. Could really put a big number on the scoreboard for this inning. You can kind of see that Albany has knocked the wind out of Anson a little bit. They're not as quite as chirpy and body language is starting to go the other way for the Tigers here. The count now two and two is that pitch missed inside. So two balls, two strikes here, two outs. Here's Estes' pitch, and that's going to be hit high towards the shortstop. He'll move over towards the third baseman, and he'll glove it. So that will end the inning. So we'll leave them loaded, but able to score four runs. Your lines lead 5-2. to two. We'll be right back. Let's take a look at Friday next week along with the women's shot put, which is scheduled to start at 11.30. The women's discus will be on Saturday morning, starting at 9 a.m. Now let's take a look at the running events. Pretty good day overall. Obviously our 800 relay didn't qualify, so that was a little bit of a downer, but everything else we had uh, ran really well on both hurdles. Mile relay dropped two more seconds from last week, so. We're hoping to just get a little better between now and uh, the regional track. Ashlyn Miller, um, she got fifth in the quarter. Um. The goal at regionals is to see if you can qualify for state. Top two get out, so it gets tough. Um, mile relays in the hunt, but there's definitely some good people out there that we'll have to beat in order to do it. Um, Adams obviously has a good chance to possibly even get wild card in the shot put just from looking at throws around the state. Well, Luke is sitting in really good position and Braylon is right there, on, you know, in the in the mix. There's two guys that are Looking ahead to next week, the Lions and Lady Lions have several opportunities at, at advancing to the state meet. Let's take a look at next week's original schedule for our qualifiers. The running prelims are slated to start on Friday at 2 o'clock, along with the running finals on Saturday also starting at 2 o'clock. On the track representing Albany will be boys 110 meter hurdles, Adam Hill, boys 400 meters, Jace Tinkle, boys 300 meter hurdler, Adam Hill, and the boys 4x4 team composed of Jace Tinkle, Jackson Street, Chip Chambers, and Adam Hill. We wish the very best of luck to all these athletes as they'll be looking to qualify to the state meet held on May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in Austin, Texas at Mike Myers Stadium. All right, welcome back here. Tyler Chapman back on the mound. 5-2 Albany lead, and that pitch is going to paint the outside corner for strike number one, the lane. Albany able to pick up four runs in that bottom of that third inning. and I'd like to see us come out here and have a clean inning here and get back with the bats here in the fourth inning. Count now one ball and one strike. Coach Peacock up here with me. I want to welcome you to Albany Lines Baseball. Got Colt 
Colt here on the computer with us and Adrian out there on the camera. I think Adrian's doing a great job. I've, I kind of glanced over here. It looks like he's keeping the um, camera still. Huh? He's doing a good job. Hard thing to do today with that wind. It is. Uh, he's up there in a little, little nest up there in right field. And T Chaps curveball. That's oh, a nice job. pitch. When you're gearing up for 90 and then that pitch comes in, it makes it hard to hit. He came out, tacked that outside corner, three straight pitches, and then just froze him right there. And that's great job right there by Tyler. The senior pitcher, I believe he's committed to Tyler Junior College. Is that correct? Have you heard that? I think I've, I think I've heard that. I don't know if it's – don't hold me to it, but – well, he's going to help somebody out for sure. He's, he's yep. got a big arm and uh, look for some big things out of Tyler at the next level. So one ball and no strikes here to Ch uh, for Chapman. One out here. And Cole Reed still the catcher. So you're infield. you got Wagner at third base, Kaysen Fairchild at shortstop, Brody Oliver at second, Callan Fairchild at first. Your outfield consists of center fielder Chip Chambers, left fielder Woods Peterson, and Right fielder Mason McCloy. Two players on Coach Fairchild's bench is Paquet and Branson Beal. Here's Tyler's pitch. That's going to miss. It's a four pitch walk. So that'll put a runner at first base. That's Tackleman. That'll bring up Anthony Hernandez, the third baseman. I'm not a big uniform guy, but I just I don't like the black pants. What do you think, Colt? They Ants. could definitely get hot on a yeah on a, on sunny, a sunny day. day. It could. I mean, it's all black. Tigers wear a red belt, black pants, black jerseys, pinstripe. Has tigers across the back. It's in white. Numbers and Tigers and Anson across the chest, outline in red. Oh, one pitch here by T Chap, the runner at first base. Ooh, it's going to be a strike. Popped out of the mitt of Cole Reed, and the umpire really didn't want to call it a strike, but it caught enough of the plate. Count now, no balls and two strikes here. Tackleman with the modest lead at first base. That's going to be a called strike. Tyler Chapman throws one right on the lower half of the zone for a strikeout. You can see both teams looking at that pitch, shaking their head, <laughs> but it's been a strike the whole game. Yeah, that's the only thing you can ask for if you're a player or a coach that this umpire showed his strike zone to be extremely consistent. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a strike. Of course, that batter goes, that's the reason that other pitch is hard to hit because he can throw it on the inner inner part of the plate for a strike and makes it awful hard. No balls and one strike here. And it's going to be fouled off. So the count now 0-2 with the runner at first base. Coach Fairchild will walk out towards the catcher, Cole Reed, as maybe Cole caught that off the thumb. Tyler, another opportunity for the second inning in a row to get out of this with about 10 to 12 pitches. and So big pitch right here again for Tyler. So the count at 0 and 2 here. Here's the righty's pitch. And that's going to be grounded towards Wagner. He'll glove it knee high on to first base, and that's an out. So Wagner will throw it across the diamond to Callen, and that'll be out number three. So we're to the bottom of the fourth inning. Your Albany Lions lead five to two. Located at 525 North Main Street in Albany, Texas, the shop opened its doors in September 2023. We carry a large variety of items from handmade bits and spurs, and buckles, leather goods, saddles and tack, ropes, and assortment of knives. We also provide an assortment of home goods through G3 Cattle Company. We are stocked with fresh cuts of beef, pork, and chicken, along with jams and preserves, baking goods, Bowman's milk, coffee, 
and other general merchandise. If you're in need of a trim, we also offer a walk-in barber service. We're open from 1 to 5.30 Tuesday to Thursday and 9 to 5.30 on Fridays. Come visit us at the shop, Albany's headquarters for homemade goods. Where a handshake is our word, cattle are money, and timing is everything. Western Livestock is a family-owned and operated livestock auction and order buying company with more than 30 years of experience. You trust us with your livelihood each week. The buying power in our seats ensures top dollar for your livestock to allow you to keep doing what you love. With sale barns in Oklahoma City, Comanche, and Woodward, Oklahoma, and Knoxville, Iowa, we're large enough to serve you, but small enough to know you. To learn more, call Ben Hale at 940-631-2333 or visit westerncommissioncompany.com. All right, welcome back. It's Albany 5, Anson 2. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Got the Clear Fort Bank scoreboard out there in right field. Got a nice Friday night crowd here. And baseball field. It's my name's Tony Wheeler. I got Coach Peacock and Colt up here with us, and Adrian out. Uh, thank Matthew Howard for coming up and setting all this stuff for uh, stuff up for us, also. And count is no balls and one strike here. Tyler Chapman up the bat. And Tyler one for two on the afternoon. Pitch from Estes is going to miss outside. So the count now one and one. So one ball, one strike here. Crooked number four there in the bottom of the third inning. That's going to be skied back towards. I don't know where Ooh, it's at. That it just hit? came behind us. I'm Did not so sure we couldn't <laughs> reach back and caught that thing. I was waiting for it to hit the 10 here and scare everybody, but I thought that the, the way the catcher was acting, he thought he might have a play on it, but hit, hit behind us here and. Just a strike, so one ball and two strikes here to Tyler Chapman. Estes, pitch, and that's gonna be hit up the middle. He'll try to barehand it, it'll get off the second base bag, on the first base. Oh, that was, that was a nice play there. Tyler Chapman showing some of his speed getting down the line there. So Estes tried to barehand it, and then it, Rolled past him and hit right off the top of the second base bag, and somehow Dillard was able to field it and fired onto first base and made it a bang bang play over there as Wilburn had to lay out and try to keep the ball going by him at first base. Yeah, that was a heck of a play by the shortstop staying with that. Here's Estes' pitch, and that's going to be hit foul as Cole Reed. Oh, is one for two on the afternoon. So Reed. Struck out in his first plate appearance, but then his second at bat, he hit one up the middle for a base hit. Tyler at first base in a five to two game. That's gonna miss inside, so the count now one and one. Very similar at bats from their second time through the lineup. Tyler getting on base on a one and two count. Cole coming after the first pitch. It's Cole Reed. will sky this one towards center field. The center fielder running back and he'll catch it. Well, that's a ball that was hit somewhere around 350. Pretty good ride there into the wind for Cole Reed, but just a long out. And Tyler Chapman will have to go back to second base, or first base, sorry. Yeah, he really got a hold of that ball, but with the way the wind's blowing in, it's, it's going to be tough to put one out of the park today. And yeah, that's one of those at bats where Cole. He'll, he'll get a base hit in this season that will be one of those little bleeders that just barely get over the infield. But that one there, he kind of got robbed. But nice play there by the center fielders. He had a beat on it the whole time. One out. Here's the pitch by Estes. That's going to miss outside. And they'll throw down to first base, but Tyler back into the bag safely. I'm not going to say saying can't hit it out because – he has some different bat speed. Here's the pitch. And that's going to miss low for ball number two. Yeah, I think if we were drafted teams to try to hit one out, I might start with <laughs> that, Zane. That was the first option. Yeah. That 
that's going to miss low. So we count now three balls and no strikes here. Runner at first base and one out. And Callan Fairchild waiting for his at bat. Zane takes that pitch for strike number one, but three balls and one strike here. Estes comes set. Here's the pitch. And that's going to miss up in the zone. It's off speed pitch. It's going to be ball number four. I like to see Coach Fairchild over at third base. You know, when like Zane comes at the bat, he starts moving back, knowing that <laughs> that foul ball is going to come really quick towards him. Yeah, that's not one of those that you want to no. try to make a play. You on. don't want to show you don't want to show your skills off over there. You just do your best to get out of the way. <laughs> it's been a few years ago, but I've been some pretty funny attempts at. I think Coach Faith one year, he kind of wiped out over there trying to field one in, in a playoff game. You know, those balls, they get on you a lot <laughs> faster than you realize. <laughs> yeah. Here's the pitch. And that's going to oh, be yeah. hammered Good up. Shot. Yep, hammered up towards center field. Tyler Chapman around third. He'll slam on the brakes. Probably a wise decision as that run, uh, throw came in pretty quickly, but nice piece of hitting there by Callan Fairchild, and that'll leave them, that'll get them loaded here for Chip Chambers. Great piece of hitting right there by Callan again. I think that's his second hit, consecutive hit tonight. So Callan at first base, you got Wagner at second base, Tyler Chapman at third. Last time in this situation, Chip Tried to butt one time, but with the bases loaded and one out here in a game that Albany has five runs to Anson's two, it looks like Chip's going to be swinging away. Got a big gap over there between third and short, trying to hold Zane on there over at second, so they, he's got a big hole to work with. Chambers crowds the home plate here. 2-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Big cut there by Chip. Estes comes set. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be a called strike on the inside corner. As Chip bats on the left side. That same pitch. It's been called a strike, but this time it's an inside strike to Chip. Here's the 2 2 count. Chip's going to hit this in towards the shortstop. He'll glove it. He'll throw on the second base. That ball's bobbled. Everybody's going to be safe. That's credit to Callan Fairchild for getting down the line towards second base quickly, and he slid in hard at the second base bag. There's no reason that that should have been that close, but Callan's hustle allowed that to be a RBI or a, a run scored there for Albany. Yeah, that's a great job, Callan, getting down the line, putting some pressure on that second baseman. Brody's going to swing and miss the count now 0 and 1. So bases stay loaded here. That ball was hit right towards the shortstop, and I'm not sure the shortstop wouldn't, shouldn't have just ran to the second base bag. That ball's going to get by the catcher. That'll bring Wagner in to score. That ball's thrown away from the pitcher, but right to Hernandez, the third baseman, and that'll keep Callen at third base. But got Callen at third and Chip at second in the 7-2 game. That almost could have been a little dangerous right there. It got by the pitcher and went right to the third the baseman. baseman. If Callan's rounding that third baseman. Even a uh, foot race. It could have been interesting right there. <laughs> Any one of those bad. Bad uh, plays that ended up being good. Yeah, for them. Yeah. That's. Yeah, the catcher, he just winged it back to Estes, and Estes did everything he can to keep it in front of him. But good job by Hernandez to be alert over there at third base. Pitch into Brody. Going to miss inside. So two balls and one strike here. And Brody has struck out in his first at bat, and I think he was hit by a pitch in his second. 
Here's the pitch. And that's going to miss low for ball number three. So way ahead in the count here. And that ball's going to get by the pitcher. I think fatigue's starting to set in on the Tigers here. Now Estes already up to 50 pitches right here. I think what is he threw a, about an inning and a third for him. He came in in relief of Wilburn. After Albany got to Wilburn there in the bottom of the third inning. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a called strike. So three balls and two strikes here to Brody. One out, and Albany leads 7-2. Infield is in for Anson. That pitch is going to miss outside, so that'll be a walk of Brody, and that'll put them loaded here. So bases are loaded, and bring up Woods Peterson, and Woods yeah. has reached base safely both times. Estes again trying to trying to go to that outside corner again. Those guys have seen everybody laying off that pitch and they're trying to work it, but that time that ball just just a little wide. Albany able to score one in the first, four in the third, and it's tacked on two here in the fourth. Opportunity for more runs. It's, it's seven two. But the base is loaded. One out. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Woods. And Peterson's going to, whoa, talking about athletic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coach Fairchild's going to put number 11 on his list. <laughs> Scoop back. <laughs> uh. I think he's got a big smile on his face out <laughs> he there. Does, he does. He, he does. dodged a bullet right <laughs> there. He did. <laughs> Coach Fairchild don't have a lot of meat on his bones, and that was – Aiming right for the kneecap. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch there by Estes as after Woods teed off on that fastball. And Estes came back with the slow breaking ball. And count now one ball and two strikes. That ball gets by the catcher. Estes will try to cover home, but Callan Fairchild will slide in safely. Now the score is eight to two. And runners Chip Chambers and Brody Oliver will move up a bag. Now standing at third and second. I'm just glad that Coach Fairchild, has, he stayed on his feet. He, he I mean, did he, a good job. He, he <laughs> threw that left leg up, put his <laughs> hand down. Uh, all these years, I thought those kids got everything from Kinsey, but maybe Coach Fairchild was an athlete at some point. Uh, Estes comes set. Here's a pitch. Oh, Ooh, that's going to be a strikeout. Nope. Go to first, Woods. I think the catcher might have tried to been arguing that he yeah, swung right I, there. I think so. And I think he was just trying to get out of the way, and unfortunately kind of had that motion. Yeah. Yeah, Woods will reach base safely after the hit by pitch. So base is loaded here, and this will bring up Mason. One out, scores eight to two. And that's going to miss outside. You know, you've seen Anson move the infield in. Now they're moving back. back yeah. they've, they've kind of moved back and forth. I don't know if that's just a for different type of hitters or what, but they've backed up again for Mason right here. And they got the corners in, but the infielder, the middle infielders are playing at double play depth here. That's going to be a called strike. Count now, is it 0-2 or 1-1? Scoreboard says 0-2. Umpire says 1-1. I think it's 1-1. Yeah. So one ball, one strike here to Mason. Here's Estes pitch, swing and a miss. Callen, or Kaysen Fairchild waits on deck. So Kaysen on deck. Got bases loaded here, Albany 8, Anson 2. Pitch is going to get by the catcher, and that'll score Chip Chambers. I think that's the third run this inning that's have scored on a pass ball or a wild pitch. I think that's the third consecutive run that we've had this that inning, way. and then we followed it up with a walk. So we've had bases loaded, then second and third. Bases loaded, second and third. This pitcher, Estes, he's got some late movement on his fastball. It kind of tails away from the catcher, and he's having a hard time. I think he's trying to – 
maybe frame that outside corner and sometimes he's trying to catch it in the strike zone instead of catching it before it gets to the backstop and it's kind of struggles here in this fourth inning as Albany leads nine to two. One ball and two strikes. And that's gonna miss inside. So How it continues. Yeah, Mason able to scratch out a walk after falling behind in the count. And Coach Nichols will come out for a mound visit. It's likely going to be a pitching change, so we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Albany leads 9-2. Let's take a look at the District 10-2A golf results held on April 1st and 2nd at the Shady Oaks Country Club. Representing the Lady Lions was Miley Leverage. Leverage got off to a start of 120 on her first round and followed that on day two with the 118. Miley played really good. She uh, improved her score from last time she played at Shady Oaks, and then on the second day improved it again. So she shot her best uh, both days. So she really, really improved, especially her short game. Now let's take a look at the boys' side. Individually for the men's team, Luke Wheeler had the best two-day total of 156, as he shot 72 on day one and 84 on day two. He finished third individually. Rounding out the rest of the scores for Team 1 were Houston Heatley with a 165 total, Luke Marshall with the 163, Huffman Heatley with the 171, and Aiden Blue with the 178. Team 2 was led by Ty Richards, who carded a two-round total of 177. Connor Smith with 184, Hollis Yates 184, Landon Blue 206, and Jacob Knight 205. Medalist Dylan Paxton shot a two-round total of 282, followed by Shooter Show for the two-round total of 285. We could shoot better, um, but, but right now it's just a matter of survive in advance, just um, get a good enough score to where we can get to regionals, but we shot in the 320s, and we're going to have to probably shoot in the three teens, probably to get out of uh, regionals to state. So I feel okay about it because we were able to, to, um, to, to advance, but we, we're going to have to step our game up a little bit and shoot a little better at regionals to get to state. Pretty good. I've been gathering a few scores. Um, what we shot at regional or, or at district is going to be very competitive and what's coming in at regionals. Um, I know that Lindsay, the defending state champs, they shot uh, 297, which is really, really good um, at their district. Uh, but I'm kind of in the process of gathering some other districts on what they shot. Uh, but th those are good scores going into district, I mean, going into regionals. And, um, you know, obviously last year we did the same thing, shot a little higher, then got to regionals and shot lower. So that's obviously the goal again. Next up for the boys' golf team will be the regional golf tournament held on April 15th and 16th at the Old Brickyard Golf Course in Ferris, Texas. All right, that'll bring up Kaysen Fairchild after the pitching change. Let's see who at number six. The new pitcher is number six. I don't know if I have a number six. Maybe a number eight. I'm Maybe not eight. sure. It's hard to tell. Well, hold on. Looks like a six, though. Maybe it is six. It's hard to tell. Reister. We're going to call him Reister. Bases are loaded here for Kaysen Fairchild in a 9-2 game. Here's the pitch. That's going to miss low. The count one and one. So one ball, one strike here. Oliver at third. You got Woods Peterson standing on the second base bag and Mason McCloy at first base. Yeah, I think they've taken Wilburn, moved him to second, and Esses back to first. I think Reister must have come from second, second base. base. Yeah. So Reister, the third pitcher of the afternoon for Coach Nichols, Anson Tigers. Here's the pitch, and that's slow breaking balls, and it catch the outside corners of the count now two and two. So two balls and two strikes here to Kaysen. Kaysen is starting shortstop this afternoon, and he's going to hit this one towards the shortstop. He'll glove it, throw on to second base, and Wilburn, will retire Mason. That will get Brody Oliver across the plate. So a run will score. So Oliver able to score from third. 
That was going to be a tough turn right there. You got a lot of speed coming down that first baseline. Yeah, you can see Wilburn had he had he was just trying to get an out there, and Wilburn never never even looked at first base. But I tell you what, that shortstop's made made some plays. Who's the shortstop? That's Tackleman, the shortstop. Now Kaysen will go down to second base. So runners at second and third. And during the break, Coach Peacock said it, Tyler was able to start this inning at the plate, and he's we've batted around for the second consecutive inning. Tyler misses that pitch up in the zone, or the pitcher misses it up in the zone. So the count now, one ball and one strike. Scores Albany 10, Anson 2. That's going to hit Tyler. Mm -hmm. So Tyler will reach base safely after the hit by pitch. So the bases are loaded, and that'll bring up Your catcher, Cole Reed. Mr. Blue Shoes, Cole Reed, the Carolina Blue baseball cleats. I don't know if you call that Carolina Blue or I don't. I don't like Carolina. Call that Smurf Blue. I don't know. What do you call that? Yeah, I'm more of a Duke guy. So I'm a Duke guy sense. too. So I'm it's not just not dark enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> but Cole Reed. Fashion statement will sky this one towards center field. That's going to be an out as he he's flown out. Both he recorded maybe two outs that inning. Both of them hard fly balls out to center field. So Albany able to score five runs. It's Albany ten. Anson two. We'll be right back. We're the bank you've always known and trusted. A part of your community for generations. And now. First National Bank of Albany Breckenridge is Clear Fork Bank. We're still privately owned and independent. You'll find the same dedicated team, the same friendly faces, and the same strong relationships with our customers. Our offerings have expanded to better serve you, but our commitment to local banking is steadfast. Clear Fork Bank, serving Texans since 1883. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, hunting and fishing supplies, along with wildlife and pet feed. Let us load you up in our drive through warehouse. Need something delivered? We can come to you with our blower buggy to fill your corn and protein feeders, along with delivery of sacked feed and round or square bales of hay. Not only does Easy Feed have all your farming and ranching supplies, it's now the proud home of Parsons Beef where you can get your prime Wagyu and Angus beef straight from our Texas ranches. Easy Feed and Supply, proudly serving Albany since 2011. All right, Albany 10, Anson 2. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Man, I just wanted it to be the sixth, but it's not the sixth yet. It's just the fifth. Albany leads 10-2, and Tyler Chapman back on the mound. The righty will deliver this pitch, and Diller's going to hit this one in the gap between the shortstop and third baseman. That'll be a leadoff single. 
for the Tigers. And that was going to be a tough play for either one of our infielders. Diller does a great job. Of another guy that had a good meet yesterday at the area meet, and he's got a lot of speed on those base base pass. Yeah, he's the starting center fielder, and he's caught everything out there in center field. And Tyler will throw over to try to get Dillard at the first base, but going to slide back in safely here. Ooh, nearly. Dillard was not paying attention, and Tyler threw quickly back to the bag, but first base coach was on top of it. Here's Tyler's pitch. Swing and a miss as Reister swings through a pitch on the inner part of the plate. Monday, tune in to listening to Lady Lines Softball. We'll have a Lady Lines broadcast Monday afternoon and then Choose the Albany plays here, so you'll be able to listen to Choosey's broadcast also. So Monday and Choosey, you'll get your softball and baseball. Here's Tyler's pitch. That's going to be fouled back behind us. That's headed to the parking lot. That ball is still going. Yeah, it's rolling. Went off the face of the green room and. Count now, no balls and two strikes here to Reister. Tyler working off that third base side of the pitching rubber. Here's the righty's delivery, and that's going to miss low. So one ball and two strikes here. Albany with the eight-run lead. Here in the top of the fifth inning. Cole Reed throws down to first base, and Callen does a nice job to keep the ball from getting into right field as Dillard able to slide into the first base bag. The count two and two. So two balls and two strikes here. Wagner, the third baseman, plays in on the infield grass. Here's the pitch. That's going to be grounded towards Kaysen. Kaysen will glove it on the second. Oliver on to first. That's the second time we've turned a double play. This time it was Fairchild Oliver to Fairchild. The first time it was Oliver to Fairchild to Fairchild. Hey, this may be the new defense here. Great job there by Kaysen and Brody. It's two outs. That'll erase an infield, or that'll erase a leadoff hit for the second time this afternoon. You don't see that very often. No, not, not you, you really not, don't. Yeah, not this. You watch baseball on TV, yeah, you see that a lot. Wilburn's going to be hit by the pitch. But in 2A baseballs. No, there's a lot that, that that's got to happen. First of all, you're going to have to have a ball that's hit hard enough to yeah. allow a team to turn it. You know, Brody had a little bit more time to gather himself and really get more behind that ball, so. The first one was a lot, little bit tougher. He didn't have as much time. That one, he was able to step into his throw and put more on it. So, yeah, great job there by the defense, and well, it's a pretty big play considering that Wilburn was hit. On the next pitch, so Wilburn will get second base here after the wild pitch. You know how many pitches he's thrown now? Yeah, it looks like he's up to right at 74, 75 pitches, I think, right now. So he's up to about 47 in the second inning and really started to find the strike zone and did a good job to maximize his pitches here. As Wilburn stands at second base in a 10-2 game, Albany leading. leading. Here's Tyler's 1-1 pitch. That's a nasty breaking ball. He's grinning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tyler's done a great job these last two innings. You know, quick 10, 12 pitch innings, get himself in a position to go deeper in this game. Estes the batter for Anson here. He was the relief pitcher that came in for Wilburn. That's going to miss up.
hat stayed on Tyler's head a little bit more than it has in years past. This big radial deliver pitches, and a lot of times it'll fly off his head. Here's a 2-2 pitch, and that breaking ball's going to be a ball, but a nice job there by Cole Reed to keep it in front of him, and that keeps Wilburn at second base. It's going to be a full count here. Tyler comes set. Got to look at second base, and here's the pitch, and that's going to be fouled back. Woods Peterson out there in left field. Chip Chambers out in center. Mason in right field. Chip's caught a couple of balls out there in center. Not much action has taken place towards Mason or Woods. Here's Chapman's pitch. He'll yank that one in the left-handed batter's box, and that'll be a walk of Estes. So now runners at first and second with two outs. Umpire's going to call time and clean off home plate. Baseball field looks good, Coach Peacock. It's, I guess all the rain we've had, it's really – Really done well this year. It is in good shape. Uh, again, yeah, like you said, that rain has definitely helped. It's going to be a strike on the outside corner. And you can put all that sprinkler water you want on it. It doesn't do as good as that rain from up above. It does not. So Tyler. Looks at second base. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That's going to be hit foul. Count now 0-2. So Tyler way ahead in the count here. And this is number five. Up the bat for Anson. Tyler. 0-2 pitch is going to miss outside. Wilburn will go up to third base after the ball gets away from Cole. And Estes up to second base. I don't know if Tyler's just trying to overthrow or if there's his misses have been in the same spot this inning. And it's, it's well out of the strike zone. Like to see him settle in right here. Come after the batter. One, two, count, two outs. Big pitch right here for Tyler. T Chap slider's going to miss outside. And boy, tip your hat to the Anson batter there to lay off a tough pitch on the count at one and two there. It, he flinched a little bit. You can yeah. see he was trying to, he's a little eager out there. I think he was thinking yeah. about swinging. Yeah, he, he's heard Coach Nichols and everybody else tell him, don't go down looking. T-Chap, 2-2 two -two pitch is going to miss, so the count now full. So a full count here with Anson Tigers standing at second and third and in a 10-2 ball game. Cole Reed will walk out and visit with Tyler and give him some words of encouragement. Just got to get one pitch here, and that will end the inning and get us – back up to bat in the bottom of the fifth with a chance to tack on a few more runs with the eight run lead. That's going to miss outside. Tyler kind of looking over at the dugout. Yeah. He was, he was one that to be a called strike and I don't know how much longer Coach Fairchild will let Tyler roll here but he's going to stay with him. T-Chap comes set. Here's the pitch. Gets by Cole Reed, and Wilburn will stay at third base. It's probably a smart decision. In yeah. a 10-2 ball game, that third run's not that important, but if Wilburn got cut down at the plate for the final out, that wouldn't have.
been good. Who's at the bat here? I think it's Lane. Yeah, Corey Lane up the bat. That's going to be a ball. I don't, I'm not sure they're going to swing until they get a strike here. As Tyler's command has, you know, when you start getting up in that pitch count, it's, it's harder and harder to throw strikes here. And count now two balls and no strikes. Yeah, I'm not so sure he didn't start off in the low 60s in this inning. We're all already up to 89, 90 pitches right here total for Tyler. So, is it really is it 2-0 or 3-0? 3-0. 3-0 pitch here for Tyler with bases loaded. And he'll hit that one right down the middle for strike number one. So three balls and one strike here. We'd already played three innings in softball in this one inning. <laughs> so this game has started to find a s slow pace here, and Tyler's going to fire another fastball in there, and Lane swung at it, but unable to connect. It's a count now three and two. Yeah, got three, two, two outs. Runner's probably going to be moving right here. Tyler got a chance to get out of this inning with no runs. Here's Chapman's pitch. Swing and a miss. He'll strike out. Lane to end the inning. The Tigers will leave them loaded. So Tyler Chapman able to get through that trouble. It's Albany 10, Anson 2. We'll be right back. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, hunting and fishing supplies, along with wildlife and pet feed. Let us load you up in our drive through warehouse. Need something delivered? We can come to you with our blower buggy to fill your corn and protein feeders, along with delivery of sack feed and round or square bales of hay. Not only does Easy Feed have all your farming and ranching supplies, it's now the proud home of Parsons Beef, where you can get your prime Wagyu and Angus beef straight from our Texas ranches. Easy Feed and Supply, proudly serving Albany since 2011. Whether it's sculptures, metal fences, metal art, or entry gates, Joe Barrington has you covered. His images are drawn from a lifetime of living in rural Texas. With projects located in areas such as the Rawls College of Business Administration at Texas Tech, the Rio Grande Zoo in Albuquerque, New Mexico, along with his works being included in private collections, including the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and the Old Jail Art Center in Albany, Texas. Contact Joe today at 940-862-3023. Check him out on the internet at joebarrington.art or swing by and check out some of his art collections found at the Magnolia Station in Albany, Texas. All right, welcome back here is Anson's going to have a change of pitcher here as number nine will come in to pitch for Anson. Albany leads 10-2. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. So Hernandez will be the new pitcher for Anson. So Reister will go over to second base. That'll move Wilburn to shortstop and Estes, the starting first baseman, now will move to third. Let's bring up Zane. Wagner's going to swing and miss at a slow breaking ball. That caught the outside corner, but number 15, St. John will move over to first base. He'll come off the bench. Score 10-2 Albany. Here's the pitch, and Hernandez's pitch is going to be hit into left field by the diving Estes at third base. Wagner around first, headed to second, and it'll be a stand-up double for Wagner. Great job there by Zane as he hit one by the third baseman. to Albany, the leadoff double by Zane. 
This will bring up Callan Fairchild. Hernandez comes set. Got to look at second base, and here's the pitch. And that's going to be hit hard into left field. That'll get by the left fielder. Wagner will score. Callan Fairchild digging for second here, and he'll get into second base standing for an RBI double and score now 11-2. to two. To bring up Chip Chambers. So Chip up the bat here with the runner at second base. Hernandez set. Here's the pitch. Chip's going to sky this one towards center. Center fielder will give off to the left fielder, and the left fielder will catch it for out number one. But Big fly ball there from Chip. It looked like Diller was going to get over to catch that ball at first, but then as the wind has started to die down a little bit here, and left fielder able to mosey on over and catch that fly ball. Scores remains at 11 to 2 with one out here. Callan Fairchild will steal third base. And he timed that perfectly as Hernandez came, come, came set out of the stretch there and looked a second, but didn't look again, and Callan was off on the first movement. Here's Oliver. That's going to be a called strike. Count now one and one, so one ball and one strike here. One ball, one strike here to Brody. Anson infield drawn in somewhat. Not on the infield grass, but playing about halfway towards the grass. They're creeping in. The outfielders have creeped in also. Trying to cut down this winning run at third base. Here's Hernandez pitch. And that's going to miss up in the zone. So three balls and one strike. So a 3-1 count here to Brody Oliver. Albany leads 11-2 with Callan at third base. That's going to miss low. So Oliver will reach base safely with a walk. So now runners at the corners here, and it'll bring up Woods Peterson. Runners at first and third here, and Woods Peterson up the bat. Albany 11, Anson 2. That's going to be skied towards left field. It's a big shot. That's going to be fair. That's going to be a fair ball. Woods Peterson into second base. Callan Fairchild will score, and that will be the 10-run rule, so the mercy rule in effect as Albany will win by a score of 12 to 2, but Woods Peterson hammered one down the line that caught just enough for the, I mean, it's barely fair, but great job there by Woods. He jumped on the first pitch and hit that for a base hit. So Tyler Chapman's going to come away with his winning pitcher. Albany officially wins by a score of 12 to 2. So a 12-2 victory for your Albany Lions. I'm going to remind our listeners and watchers that they can tune in and watch softball on Monday. You got baseball on Tuesday. I want to thank Colt and Adrian and Coach Peacock and myself for doing this and thank our sponsors for bringing us Albany baseball. So Coach Fairchild and his baseball squad comes away with a good victory tonight. Tyler Chapman, the winning pitcher. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll Thank you all for listening. Till next time. Let's take a look at the area track meet for districts 9 and 10 held on April 11th at Newton Field in Graham, Texas. Qualifying in the field events were girls discus throwers Keanu Robertson and Cheyenne Weaver, girls shot put Keanu Robertson, boys shot put Adam Hill, and boys pole vaulters Luke Marshall and Braylon Billington. On the track we had Adam Hill and the boys 110 meter hurdles. 
Braylon Billington, Jackson Street, Chip Chambers, and Callum Fairchild in the boys' 4x2. Ashlyn Miller and Zane LaFever in the girls' 400. Jace Tinkle in the boys' 400. Adam Hill in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. And Jace Tinkle, Jackson Street, Chip Chambers, and Adam Hill in the boys' 4x4. The area meet was kicked off with the field events. First off, it was Keanu Robertson qualifying in both the discus and the shot put for the Lady Lions. And then for the Albany Light Lions, we had Adam Hill qualifying the shot put. And then Luke Marshall and Braylon Billington both qualifying in the pole vault. Girls all performed well. Um, we had Kiana get out in both of her uh, shot put and discus. Um, she um, Cheyenne threw, threw well. Um, she was about seven feet short of advancing. She got fifth. A uh, couple of PRs in the vault. Adam threw well in the shot put. Both the boys' pole vault and shot put will start at 9 a.m. on Friday next week, along with the women's shot put, which is scheduled to start at 11.30. The women's discus will be on Saturday morning, starting at 9 a.m. Now let's take a look at the running events. Pretty good day overall. Obviously our 800 relay didn't qualify, so that was a little bit of a downer, but everything else we had but ran really well on both hurdles. Mile relay dropped two more seconds from last week, so we're hoping to just get a little better between now and uh, the regional track. Ashlyn Miller, um, she got fifth in the quarter. Um. The goal at regionals is to see if you can qualify for state. Top two get out, so it gets tough. Um, mile relays in the hunt, but there's definitely some good people out there that we'll have to beat in order to do it. Adam is obviously has a good chance to possibly even get wild card in the shot put just from looking at throws around the state. Well, Luke is sitting in really good position, and Braylon is right there. On, you know, in the in the mix, there's two guys that. Are looking ahead to next week, the Lions and Lady Lions have several opportunities at, at advancing to the state meet. Let's take a look at next week's regional schedule for our qualifiers. The running prelims are slated to start on Friday at 2 o'clock, along with the running finals on Saturday also starting at 2 o'clock. On the track representing Albany will be boys 110 meter hurdles, Adam Hill, boys 400 meters, Jace Tinkle, boys 300 meter hurdler, Adam Hill, and the boys 4x4 team composed of Jace Tinkle, Jackson Street, Chip Chambers, and Adam Hill. We wish the very best of luck to all these athletes as they'll be looking to qualify to the state meet held on May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in Austin, Texas at Mike Myers Stadium.